This poem shows my life and how God, by his grace, turned it upside down. For that, I am so very grateful. Grew up in a Christian home. Middle child I was, never alone. We went to church and I was taught all the right things until I reached out to the world and flapped my own wings. I wasn't ready to fly, too young, but I tried. At the young age of 13, I gave away my most precious gift. I was getting sucked in, me, oblivious. At 14, it was pop and cigarettes, wagging every day. I was at the top of my own list. Sneaking out most nights, I brought my parents to tears. They were losing their little girl. Me? I don't care. The day came when they let me go. At 15, I was mature and independent. They needed to know. So I was free, free from rules and my parents' instructions. Little did I know, my boyfriend took this role and created his own restrictions. That didn't change. I wasn't as free as I thought. I was in more bondage than before. And that didn't change for seven years. I fought back so many tears. So here I was, a slave to all of my addictions, love, drugs, and most of all myself. I was on my own pedestal and I wasn't about to come down. Selling drugs was our lifestyle living to fill others' bottomless pits. No one was ever satisfied, but they never seemed to quit. Worry was my best friend, although pride and shame came close. I was proud of my bad name, but I wasn't always the girl my partner wanted the most. My smile was on the outside, walls of trust breaking down, hoping on a better tomorrow that maybe one day I would be found. My future from here looked grey, but I had accepted that fact. I was content. This was my life. There was no turning back. Those fairy tale romances would stay in my dreams. I'd tell myself, maybe it'll get better someday. You'll see. The drugs went from green to white, and I really got to taste from the devil's well thinking things I've never thought, and seeing things I'd never tell. At first it was amazing, and then the fights came in. Friendships went to war. At this point, everything I did was a sin. You could trust no one. Everyone had their own back. Insecurities were everywhere. Most people just wished for a life that was on track. To some, it was a meaningless quote that got them through the day. For me, the further I went, I was adamant I was going insane. Going to the doctors was the first step to recovery, and then to the counsellor, who was lovely. They both said I could be anything I wanted to be. But the thoughts in my head and the sickness in my stomach said otherwise. It said that this was forever my life, and I was never going to fly. Using all the strength I could muster, I tried to fight. Telling this voice inside me that it didn't belong, but I was using my own might. The truth was I had a burden, a heavy burden of anxiety that only the Lord could make light. It took a while before admitting defeat. I tried many different things, but here I was before the Lord and I was down on my knees. I walked slowly at the start. Going to a few services, I was mostly alone. At the time, it was the only thing giving me hope. One by one, he brought new people into my life, and before I knew it, I was looking through different eyes. The time my sister came along, I recommitted my life, and since that day, she's never left my side. God gave me the strength I didn't have on my own. He helped me give up the evil things so close to my soul. Feeding me only what I could handle, he led me out of darkness and despair. He dusted me off and saved me from Satan's lair. 
Obedience and faith have been near my heart. Dead limbs have been trimmed, and some close friends have had ways part. Many people distanced themselves and threw insults, and they talked about us like we'd joined some sort of cult. Through that time, though, we got to talk to people who wouldn't normally listen. The Lord used us to mend gaps and open them up spiritually to him. Whatever you sacrifice for the Lord, he will bless you with so much more. I stand with boldness today. The Lord has saved and grown me. I am well on my way. Many trials I've dealt with in my new Christian walk. Anxiety still faced me, but inside was a stronger force. Jesus uncovered my old desires and dreams, things I never thought possible when power were going to happen to me. The old life has gone and the new has come. My journey with Christ has only just begun. He has healed all my wounds and patched all my scars. He has built strongholds not easily torn apart. God has given me more confidence and helped me to hold my head high. I'm honoured that he uses me to speak into other people's lives. I love to live for him and I want the world to know the secret of a fulfilled soul accepting Jesus in your heart. I was empty and he was the missing part. God gave me that poem about four years ago. I was just... I was a new sort of Christian and just writing down in my diary. He woke me up one night and just said, write, write. And I was like, I don't know. And I was just writing and these words started coming out and I was like, oh, I'm a poet and I don't know it. <laughs> but it was just amazing to think he wanted my story to be something that I could share to other people and it's great. Um, so I've got a little bit of a talk about pulling some of the things out that has happened to me in my life that hopefully may resound with some of you. So, being free from rules. Do you ever find that when some, when some rules go, other ones take their place? Yeah. So, your parents' rules are only for a short time while you're sort of living with them and you're growing up, and then you're in the big, wide world and you're living under those rules. So you've got the government, you've got school, you've got work, you're under those sorts of rules now. And, but rules are needed to keep order in life. It's like playing a game of rugby with no rules. Would it even be a game of rugby? No ref, players offside, no penalties. Would it even be fair? Would you agree that when you play a game with rules and fear judgment, that it's more enjoyable? While growing up, your parents, caregivers, youth leaders, teachers, counsellors, anyone that you sort of look up to, they're guiding you and they're effectively your coaches. They're training you for the big game, life, where it is the ref that will judge your actions on the field. All they can do is prepare you and it's your choice what you do once you're on the field. I didn't want to live under these rules. And I found out things the hard way. With the law, with my school, with my workplace. I realised later on that if you listen and obey those rules, life can be more enjoyable and you get more satisfaction. The next thing was dreams. What dreams do you have? Success, marriage, to own a home, to own a business, to travel the world one day. My dreams were, and still are, to make a difference in people's lives. That was always my dream, even back when I was not living with God. My dream was to have a faithful man, to be successful, to do life in the right order. My order would be marriage, house, kids. And I was teetering on that not being the right order for a while. I was a bit worried about that. Because that was just real one of my dreams in life, to have that. 
but my life was not a picture of my dreams, but I tried to create them with the life that I had made. It was like trying to fit my messy life into a square hole. It didn't fit. I tried to make my boyfriend faithful. I tried to get him to marry me, which I'm glad he didn't. <laughs> I tried to be successful. I tried to make a difference in people's lives, but it was all in my own strength. My dreams never fully eventuated, and I was always pulled down by my addictions, or my friends, or my lifestyle. My future looked grey. What is your outlook to future, to your future, or to your present? Have you accepted things in your life as they are? It is what it is. I can't change it now. I made my bed, I may as well lie in it. When I was 15 to about 17, I'd accepted that my boyfriend would never hold down a full-time job, that I'd always be supporting him, that selling and doing drugs was just going to be a part of my lifestyle. There was no point having dreams. I just needed to accept it. This was the life I'd made. It was what I wanted, wasn't it? Every choice I'd ever made had led me to that moment, to that reality. Although I had my dreams, my reality didn't really match up. What decisions have you made that have caused you to forget your dreams or to think that they're impossible? Even if you're later on in life, sometimes there's dreams that are buried that you've covered over because of the decisions, but negative voices pulling you down. You're fat, you're ugly, you can't win. Your mental, your show off. Why do you do things like that? Sound familiar? These things can be spoken to you in many different ways through social media. You can see things and then think, I don't look like that. I'm ugly. I'm fat. They do life so much better than me. Through your own mind, even friends and family. I had these words constantly in my mind. I had to wrestle and fight with them. But they were a bit tougher than me. <laughs> they made me weak. But the truth is, they're lies. Only Jesus could help me with that. I had to cling to the truth. I've got a scripture. 2 Timothy. Oh. For God did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. When I was going through anxiety, I had so many things just in my head and so I just had to cling to that scripture that God's given me a sound mind he's given me a mind that is in control and sometimes it feels out of control are you weighed down I was heavy I had so much on my shoulders but I deserved it didn't I I was so low that I was suffocating I practically crawled through those church doors, shaking from all the anxiety that had overcome me. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come all to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the turning point. God wants more for your life than you ever imagined. Here I was settling for second best. I can stand here today coming up seven years since I've become a Christian and say that God wants to know what I can dream up next. <laughs> He's given me some of my closest heart desires. A close relationship with my parents because that was severely severed over the time when I walked away from I have a man that respects me. I'm able to share and encourage people to speak into their lives. I've gone from working at Subway to managing company. I needed to give up my dreams to God and follow him wholeheartedly. Not just sit on that fence. Not just when it suits. Proverbs 16.3 Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. 
He sees it all. He knew me and he knows you. He knows what you have been struggling with. He's waiting for us to run into his arms, especially if you don't have it all figured out. Journey with him. Reach out to him. First, not last. He can help more than any quick fix. God is a dream planter. He wants to fulfill your wildest of dreams. What are your dreams today? What dreams have you buried or let go of because of your circumstances? They're very important to him. I'm just going to finish off with two more scriptures. I've got Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. In Proverbs 3 verse 4 to 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. That one really resounds in me. Obedience. Straight path. It's hard, but... So we're just going to have the worship team come up and sing some more amazing songs. But if something in that just connects with you, you want to uncover those dreams, those desires, those things that have been maybe long ago or they're right now, things that you're just close to your heart and you want to give them to God, you want Him to take your dreams, to just turn them into something amazing, then we'd really like to pray. Or if anything else touch your heart, um, parents of, of, of young kids that have gone astray, or grandparents, or aunties, uncles, sisters, brothers, if there's someone in your life that's living that path right now that you don't really know what to do, or, yeah, we just love to pray for you. That's awesome, Emily. Thank you for that. Don't miss your opportunity, just come up and get prayed for.